Welcome to Prince George's County News. I'm Ezell Breedlove with my host, Nefertari Hewitt. Coming up, new executive takes office, learn about tips on shopping online for the holidays, and local artist receives first Grammy nomination. Shopping online means avoiding the crowds, but it also opens the buyer up to attacks from scammers and hackers. Your safety and the safety of your children can be protected by establishing guidelines. The Better Business Bureau warns, shop on trustworthy websites. Shoppers should check with the Better Business Bureau to check on the seller's reputation and record for customer satisfaction. Beware of deals that sound too good to be true. Consumers should always go with their instincts and not be afraid to pass up a deal that might cost them dearly in the end. Pay with a credit card. It's best to use a credit card because under federal law, the shopper can dispute the charges if he or she doesn't receive the item. Protect your computer as well. A computer should always have the most recent updates installed for spam filters, antivirus and anti-spyware software, and a secure firewall according to the Better Business Bureau. Protect your personal information. As you start shopping, the Better Business Bureau recommends taking the time to read the site's privacy policy and understand what personal information is being requested and how it will be used. DC's own Chuck Brown, the godfather of Go-Go, received his very first Grammy nomination last night. This year has been amazing for the 74-year-old Brown. He made his late night television debut performing with The Roots on, the, on Late Night with Jimmy Fallon. He gave a halftime show during a Redskins game and his hit Busting Loose was used in a television commercial. According to Brown, after some 40 years in the business, running around and singing in different parts of the world, I never thought it would be like this. Last week, the House delivered a tremendous victory for the nation's most vulnerable children by passing the long-awaited child nutrition bill. Passed by the Senate this summer, the bill prevailed in the House with bipartisan support and now goes to the White House for President Obama's signature. The bill boosts federal funding on child nutrition programs by $4.5 billion over the next decade. It will also raise federal reimbursements for free and reduced priced lunches provided by schools above the inflation rate for the first time since 1973. Its passage was a key priority for Michelle Obama, who has made child nutrition and fitness a key focus of her efforts to address childhood obesity. In local politics, Rashawn Baker was sworn in as Prince George's County Executive, turning the page on a government affected by allegations of corruption. Baker had a message to the county's crit critics. Our critics will leave here understanding Prince George's County is ready for greatness. Our time has come. We have, we have the skills to be first in education, public safety, and integrity. Baker replaces Jack Johnson, who's been indicted on corruption charges. Baker is a lawyer and former state delegate who ran against Johnson in 2002 and 2006, but was defeated in the Democratic primaries. One county is trying to prove it can be Epicurean. Another hopes to demonstrate its fiscal responsibility. But this isn't just a new policy platform. Newly elected politicians will be pushing these approaches through their inauguration galas in the next few days. Prince George's County Executive-elect Rashawn Baker hopes to move past the recent corruption allegations that put this county on the national map through a glitzy inaugural ball to be held at the Gaylord National Harbor on Monday. It will demonstrate the county is capable of hosting sophisticated functions in keeping with the business they hope to attract while also attempting to shake off the alleged pay-to-play culture for a new government. Meanwhile, Gov Montgomery County is bracing itself for another year of deep budgeting cuts. Executive Isaiah Leggett plans to hold his swearing-in ceremony at Rockville High School. Coming up after the break, Pepco announces an increase in consumer rates and a six-point plan to improve customer relations. Tick, 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 tick. tick. Massive heat tick, waves. Tick, 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 heat waves. Tick, Severe droughts. Tick, 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 I'm gonna do it. I'm going to actually go to school. Tell me about some of the stuff you've had to deal with. I just dropped out completely. I just got caught up in it. The whole scene 
with the alcohol and the drugs. I was arrested. A lot of my friends, they were really concerned, especially my friend Aaron. You just have to find someone. They don't have to tell you advice. They don't have to do that. They just listen. Give your friends the boost they need to graduate. Join us at BoostUp.org. PEPCO executives argue downed trees are responsible for delays in restoring power. Executives from the region's largest power provider announced Monday they will seek to increase consumer rates. The company presented a six-point plan aimed at combating the incidence of power outages recently classified as among the country's worst. The new plan involves trimming trees, yearly evaluations, improvements of power feeders, and selecting <clears throat> certain cables to move underground. After at least eight accidents occurred along the same stretch of the Capitol Beltway Friday morning, the Maryland State Highway Administration is aggressively investigating what went wrong with pre-treating the highway. A contractor pre-treated the beltway with the wrong chemical, making both the inner and outer loops a slippery mess between the American Legion Bridge and Interstate 95 in College Park. The bridge decks between Bethesda and Silver Spring were the most slippery. The accidents, which occurred between 5.30 a.m. and 7 a.m., briefly closed the outer loop between Colesville Road and Connecticut Avenue. Maryland Highway crews retreated the highway with, ro with road salt, and the highway was pretreated ahead, ahead of, week of weekend flurries. The FBI interviewed several Prince George's County police officers Thursday in connection with the March beating of a University of Maryland student. A number of officers were approached at home about the videotaped beating of Jack McKenna after a University of Maryland basketball game against Duke on March 3rd. Officers in riot gear can be seen striking McKenna with batons before arresting him. The FBI has been investigating the incident for some time, but the actions taken Thursday night signal that federal officials may be taking over the investigations. The officers involved in the incident remain suspended. A French court has ordered Continental Airlines to pay Air France more than $1.8 million in damages over the crash of a supersonic Concorde jet outside Paris a decade ago that killed 113 people. The court, in a lengthy verdict Monday, also found a Continental mechanic guilty of manslaughter. The presiding judge confirmed that titanium debris dropped by a Continental DC-10 onto the runway at Charles de Gaulle Airport before the Concorde took off was to blame for the crash. The court ordered Continental to pay Air France for moral damage and damage to Air France's reputation. Iran and six world powers held their first talks in more than a year Monday, focusing mainly on Tehran's need to defuse fears about its nuclear programs. Delegates from Iran, the U.S., Russia, China, Britain, France, and Germany met at a conference center in Geneva. European Union Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton greeted Saeed Jalili, Iran's chief negotiator in the foyer. Tehran says it does not want atomic arms and its nuclear program is only designed to provide for more power for its growing population. Yet, as Iran builds up its capacity to make such weapons, neither Israel nor the U.S. have ruled out military action if Tehran fails to heed U.N. Security Council's demands to freeze key nuclear programs. Your future bicycle helmet could look more like a scarf than a hard helmet. Developers in Sweden are working on a biker's airbag, the product they say work as an invisible helmet. A sensor inside it activates the airbag whenever it detects unusual or harsh movement. The airbags could be on the market by next year. This has been your Prince George's County Community News. I'm Nefertari Hewitt with Isel Breedlove, your daily source for news.